Oh, I thought it was I thought it was really important to put us kind of right back in it, you know, uh, with a chance to compete for one of those last spots. Maybe the league might might get in the NCAA tournament. So, uh, and anytime you went on the road, that's a good thing. What'd you do through those, you know, the first five conference games to keep everybody's heads up? And did you have what kind of confidence did you have that they would rally as well as they did the last three games? Um, well, I believe in my team, and um, like I said, we were playing okay basketball during that stretch. It wasn't like we were, you know, just getting blown out. Uh, we were playing, you know, playing well. I think uh, it showed the character of our team. You know, I thought we continued to practice well even during the losing streak. So, um, yeah, I figured at some point we're going to come out of it and, and get some wins. And I think when you get the first one, it, you know, kind of relieves some pressure and makes the the other ones a little easier. Uh, 14 straight road win or 14 straight wins for ASU. Simply, yeah. what do you guys got to do tomorrow to try to upset them here? Uh, we've got to keep our composure offensively. I mean, they. You know, a lot of what they they dictate their program around is is extreme pressure defensively, and and they just try to you know make you play fast and um, and kind of get out of your comfort zone. So we just have to you know keep our composure, handle the ball well, um, you know, not give give them easy baskets in terms of us you know live ball turnovers that they can turn into easy baskets. Uh, that's. You know, and you just got to be physically and mentally tough anytime you play Arizona State. You guys saw quite a bit of pressure against the LA schools when you were down there, and you know, Mike kind of struggled against that pressure. Do you think yeah. this will be helpful to knowing that she's kind of had a little bit of adjustment, maybe to sort of knows what's coming a little bit more this yeah, time I around? Yeah, I think the fact that we're into it eight eight games since we played them, I think will help. And we're seeing a lot of teams pressure us, so it, it won't be anything new. And I think we've done a, a, a decent job of of kind of having multiple ball handlers bring it up, not always just Maite. So, um, you know, we've had a chance. I think that, that's what you do. You, you adjust to how teams are playing you. And, uh, yeah, so I think we should be uh, we should be fine. Yeah, how much does it help Lexi, having Lexi Peterson, who has done some of that and can take some of the pressure off Maite? Uh, I think it helps a lot. And Lexi's playing well, too. So, uh, yeah, to just have that secondary ball handler, uh, not only to just bring the basketball up, but we're actually having to run a little bit of the point once we do get it across. So, um, yeah, and, and uh, you know, it just, it, it wears on you. I think Maite, to some degree, has maybe hit a little freshman wall. You know, it happens. And, um, you know, it's nice to have then somebody with, uh, with Lexi's ability. Her ability to, Maite's ability to slash the basket, though, and she's hit some, some big three-point shots yeah. for you over the course of the season. Um, so she's showing some versatility as almost like she can be a combo guard, too. Do you, so do you feel like with those two that you really can present a lot of different looks? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, no, that's a that's a great uh, uh, what were we gonna say? observation, Mosley. Hey, thanks. Nice job, buddy. Uh, yeah, hey, I think she can. Talking. No, she can. I think. Uh, yeah, and I think I think it's a more of a mental thing with Lexi Peterson if she knows she's not the point guard, so to speak, and then she relaxes a little bit more. So uh, even though she is playing quite a bit of it for us, and is Maite more of a scorer at this point in that regard? I mean. Than you thought she was. Did you I know thought she had that I, to her? I thought the last couple of weeks Maite's looking to score off the ball screens. In fact, uh, I think she may have had three or four layups off just a simple high ball screen. Um, so she wasn't trying to turn the corner before to score herself. She was looking to to maybe create for somebody else, and uh, it's nice to see. So yeah, if she just can keep her confidence up and and come off those looking to score, she becomes a lot more valuable player, and we're a better team. Do you kind of scout for Arizona State's system instead of, you know, most teams have one or two star players? It seems like they have seven or eight of the same type of player. Um, yeah, well, all their guards are quick, and they all shoot it pretty well, and all their inside kids are physical and tough. And um, No, I think you, you, you have to prepare for a style, but at the same mm -hmm. time, I think they have players that are good enough. You better prepare for them individually and what they do. So, um, yeah, it's, you know, we, we, we kind of – prepare everybody the same. Coach, why do you think uh, women's recruiting for basketball, why do you think it's sort of overlooked in a sense? And some, you know, with football signing day, there'll be a lot of attention with football. But do you think that women's basketball recruiting gets enough publicity? Oh, I don't know. I really haven't thought about it. We seem to get a lot of pretty good publicity, you know, this past November for our group. Um, but I think our date we share with a lot of other sports, you know, men's basketball in particular. So. Uh, you know, 
there's a pecking order. I, I get it. Why do you think there's so much variation between the rankings? Do you think it's good to have you know one or two guys just sort of in charge of rankings? You know, storms of more parity or whatnot. I mean, Jonathan, you could have your own ranking system, and there'd be people that would believe it. You know what I mean? It's just. Um, and it's like that on the guys' side, too. There's just more that are doing it, but it is just a, a couple of people's opinions. That's why you see a wide variation in what classes are ranked and players are ranked. And the honest truth is when you have one guy that's trying to see how many hundreds of kids out there, players, they might pop in and see one half. You know. Now, the other night against Utah, if you saw Jill in the first half, 23 points and close to 10 rebounds. She looked phenomenal. Second half, she had three points. You know, they did a better job against her. So, you know, if you happen to see the first half, and guess what? That player gets ranked highly. And then if you see the second, uh, you know, she doesn't do this and doesn't do that. So that that's it's a tough job. And that's why I don't really care about what, what it, somebody's ranked. And uh, you just kind of look at your own eyes and see, I, I like her. Well, she's ranked 200. I don't care. I like her. And some of those players, you, you look at the, uh, at the rankings, there are just as many 100 plus recruits who excelled as there were, you know, uh, the, the so-called blue chippers. And you see it in, in the NFL, right? How many second, third, fourth, fifth rounders undrafted. undrafted are out there real successful and a lot of busts in the first round. So it's an inex inexact science. That's a long answer, I know, but. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Awesome, you guys.